Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review Video, Topic 5.5, Irrigation Methods. So um, this video is going to be about um, irrigation because as we need to grow food, we have to water our crops. That's something that is pretty much non-negotiable. Um, crops need water to be able to um, thrive and we need that to be able to uh, have our own populations thrive. So um, right now, currently, uh, irrigation uses about 70% of all water use. Um, and so that ends up leading us to use different methods and depending on how much uh, either money we have available or water available that's going to depend on that's going to tell us how much uh, water we will use in the different method of irrigation so we're going to be looking at four main types um, drip irrigation flood furrow and spray irrigation so for drip irrigation this is the most efficient of our options okay you set up hoses very close to where the plants are growing and you let the water drip only where the plant is. This allows for 95% efficiency. That means all the water you use, 95% of it's going to go to that plant, um, and it's not going to allow a lot of runoff. So that you know the water is going to get to that plant and not end up running off into a river or a stream or a lake or taking with it the soil or the nutrients it needs. Um, now, of course, the downside for this method is it's very expensive, so it's not very widely used. Um, that, that's going to be what's holding it back, and you're going to see that with many of the other um, uh, methods of irrigation as well. So flood irrigation, what that one does is it allows the water to just flood the area, which is very cheap and simple, but about 20% or more gets lost um, to evaporation and to runoff. Okay, And this can lead to water logging, where basically the water sits on there too long, and the water table below can rise up, which sounds like it's a good thing, but the problem with that is the plant's roots are not going to be able to absorb oxygen. They need to be able to have aerated soil and not flooded soil, and you're basically going to drown your plants at that point. Um, the other problem you can have is salinization. That's an issue where you're going to end up with um, salts attaching to um, that water, and that's going to lead to quite a bit of the toxic metals that can stick around in the soil. Um, so you're going to end up with a lot of uh, roots dying because of that, and then your plants are not going to do so well. So there's benefits and drawbacks to that one. And so here we have furrow irrigation. This one's pretty cheap, um, and that's a good method for, that's a good reason for it to be um, used, is that it's very inexpensive and it's very similar to flood irrigation, only instead of flooding the entire field, you leave these channels between plants so you can um, water different rows of plants at the same time. And of course, just like irrigation with uh, flood irrigation, you're going to end up with a lot of water and there's going to be runoff as well. So that's going to be a problem when it comes to these two. Then we have spray irrigation, which is a little bit better. It's about 75% efficient. The downside is you are going to need energy to run these sprays and to time them out and everything like that. And it just pumps these groundwaters. Uh, typically, it pumps groundwater into these spray nozzles and it sprays over the plant. So it's a little bit better, but it's not as great as you'd like it to be. So every one of these methods of irrigation is going to have uh, positives and downsides. And that's something you should be prepared to answer on the AP exam. So one of the consequences of irrigation is right here we have the Ogallala Aquifer. Okay, So an aquifer is this area underground where there's a bunch of water. And I want you to understand that the um, uh, aquifer is not like a river or a lake underwater. It's kind of like, think of a, a wet sponge, right? If you have a wet sponge sitting on the table, you might have some water on the outside if it's very um, you know, full. But typically, you're not going to get that unless you squeeze the sponge and then the water comes out. That's kind of what the rock underneath the ground looks like. It's a sponge with water stuck in there. And so we can run pipes down in there and absorb the water and get it up. The problem is that it's going to lead to depletion of these aquifers. And again, one thing I want you to, I want you to see from this diagram here is it's a very good example of a um, tragedy of the commons. Because if you see, you know, South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico and Texas all have water rights to certain portions of this aquifer and that's going to cause problems because when one state decides to take more that's going to affect the other states and so this is a really good uh, example of uh, tragedy of the commons which was mentioned previously and so you know everybody can be affected by taking too much water in these cases. So here's some other resources you can use to help you with this uh, PowerPoint and this section so hopefully that was helpful. Thank you very much.